Hello, hello everyone. How are you doing? Thank you for joining this evening. I'm so Tez, I'll be your host. But like, was that not just an amazing, amazing video? So first of all, I want to thank everyone here for joining and thank all of our partners that, that have uh, made this happen. And this, this is Pride Inside. And tonight we're really uh, lucky to have a discussion on LGBTI um, rights and the activism that happens in Eastern Europe with two incredible speakers and human rights defenders that Amnesty uh, works with. Um, and for Pride Inside, like for those who, who it's your first um, thing that you're joining, where have you been? This is two weeks of excellent um, and amazing music and drag performance and workshops and panel discussions and much, much more. And I want everyone here who's joined to make sure that you check the full program outline on our website. It's been incredible. I joined the um, I joined Amnesty only a few weeks ago and I was uh, as the campaigning communities manager and I have just been absolutely overwhelmed by the amount of stuff that goes on. Like it's really about the essence of pride that I'm seeing this week in terms of the energy, the celebrations, the struggle, the leaders that come through it, the creativity and resourcefulness. So everyone, I really encourage you to um, check out the rest of the program that we have. But as for tonight, uh, we are joined by two extraordinary LGBTI um, act plus activists um, who are going to be talking about their experiences of standing up for LGBTI uh, rights across Est uh, Eastern Europe. Uh, firstly, we have Vitalina Koval, and she is, give us a wave, she is fashion, um, fashioning a beautiful hat and flags behind her, and she joins us from the Ukraine. And secondly, we've got Elzvieta Podlesna, and she is an LGBTI ally working to promote the rights of LGBTI community and standing up against hate crime in Poland. Give us a wave, Ella. Um, and as you can see, she's fashioned by the many, many books that she has behind her, so we know she's definitely well-read and going to be contributing uh, very, very much so to this discussion today. Uh, they've both been working with Amnesty as part of our Brave campaign, aiming to increase the recognition and protection for human rights activists around the world. So um, thank you too for joining us uh, this evening. We really appreciate it. And I'm personally very much looking forward to this, uh, to, to learn from yourselves. So I think at this moment, it would be really good if we were to go over to um, Vitalina to sort of um, start us off and maybe share a little bit about yourself and your story for a couple of minutes and then we'll go to Ella next. But hello, you know hello. Happy Pride. Nice to meet you. <laughs> we just celebrated uh, Kiev Pride and now I'm in London Pride, also digital, and I'm happy to be here with you. My name is Koval Vitalina. I'm LGBTQI plus activist from Ukraine and also women's rights defender. I was one of the heroes of letter writing marathon Right for Rights in 2018 and also brave campaign of Amnesty International. I'm glad to be here and um, now in Ukraine I'm working with the capacity strengthening of LGBTQI plus uh, movement. Great, thank you very much Vitalina and can we go over to Ella, let's hear a bit from yourself. Hello everybody, uh, happy Pride first of all, uh, happy Pride in London and everywhere in the world. Um, uh, my name is Elżbieta Podleśna, uh, I am from Poland, Warsaw, and uh, I am an LGBT plus ally. Uh, as a human rights activist, I found that uh, there is no way to talk about human rights uh, without uh, human rights of LGBT plus persons. So that's why uh, I always stand for them. Uh, perhaps I'm the best known from the uh, picture of uh, Rainbow uh, Madonna, uh, which uh, uh, we placed in several places uh, when uh, the rights of LGBT plus people uh, were uh, diminished and were broken. Uh, and I'm so happy to talk from my perspective and I'm so happy to be in such a merry and full experience. Thank you so much. Uh, Ella. And finally, I just wanted to give recognition to um, Max, who we can see, who is our BSL uh, um, interpreter. Thank you very much, Max, for being with us as well. Um, so, 
I guess this discussion, I mean, there's so much we can learn from you two, but um, we've got a set, of, a, a set of questions and then later on we'll be taking some uh, questions, hopefully from the audience as well that have tuned in today. But I thought it would be really good if we can crack on with the first question, which, you know, I'm, 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 I've been raised in the east end of London and I've worked across lots um, across the whole of the UK working on community organising and justice campaigns and activism. And I guess, uh, you know, you have a very different political, social picture and context that you work in in Eastern Europe. And so my first question and, you know, be mindful in the UK, maybe lots of us are unaware. So, you know, give us um, a r real flavour of the follow for the following question, which is like, what is it like to be uh, LGBTI um, or an ally of the LGBTI community in your own country? Um, and maybe we can go to Vitalina first. Yes, we can. <laughs> it's not so easy um, because on one hand, uh, we have now better situation with LGBTQI uh, QI plus rights mm, in general. But on the other hand, uh, we still have uh, problems because we have a lot of politicians um, that are openly against LGBTQI plus people. We have these uh, conservative parties and they are trying step by step uh, just to take even those small rights that we now have for LGBTQI plus community. And uh, on another hand, we have far rights and far right sometimes doing dirty job for these uh, bad politicians because uh, they just literally hunting people hunting activists and um, if you visible on one hand you have some kind of protection uh, because uh, if you will face uh, violence everybody will know that but um, at the same time uh, you have a very high level of risk because you are visible they have your picture and they can just uh, go after you yes so Vitalina so just on that I, yeah yeah no 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 I mean you, you use some really powerful words there. I mean you're saying that people you know you feel like people are being hunted if they're like from the lgbti community have you got sort of like what are instances where this has happened that can really illustrate what you're talking about um for example uh, now we had digital Kiev pride yes um and it was safe it was very um, interesting with a lot of bright ideas on the other hand we had um let's say each year movement um among far-right groups when they are collecting profiles in social media and pictures of lgbtqi plus activists and allies they posting them uh, in the in, in apps in channels in social media and they offer uh, for the friends from far-right groups uh, to hunt this people and to hunt everyone uh, who will have this uh, rainbow uh, symbols uh, with them on the streets unbelievable unbelievable and sort of what does that mean that people in that are like lgbti activists or uh, allies how do they sort of react to this because that makes obviously campaigning being part of the community so difficult so how does that make people feel uh, a lot of people are frustrated uh, because um, some of them have faced uh, attacks, violent attacks, um, and some of people left and they moved to different countries uh, just uh, to feel safe and to stay uh, safe there. Uh, but at the same time, we have a lot of brave activists uh, who are struggling and fighting despite that we have now um, a wave of new LGBTQI plus organizations and uh, a lot of uh, younger people mobilized uh, to fight for LGBTQI plus and women's rights. So I think that um, now we have a lot of brave people and they um, really want to have some changes and uh, this is what drives us further. 
of Vitalina, that is really good to know and to hold that thought because we're definitely going to be covering more about these beautiful people who've been brave and taken on uh, this activism. But if we can go over to Ella, and Ella, same question to you, like give us a context of how it is to be, activi um, be an activist, an ally, and to be organizing in Poland at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, when I was listening to Vitalina, I thought that uh, I was listening about Poland, uh, but unfortunately a few years ago. Uh, now uh, the situation in Poland uh, worsened uh, and uh, LGBT plus persons uh, became a sort of the scapegoat uh, of the reigning party and uh, of the president and uh, also unfortunately by the local councils. Uh, something which sounds terrible uh, was established in uh, many uh, Council by many local councils in Poland, which is called LGBT free zones. Uh, so uh, these local councils uh, declared that uh, their region would be free from so-called uh, LGBT plus ideology. This is a very strange con uh, construct, uh, which is uh, propagated, which was propagated firstly at the Catholic by the Catholic Church, uh, but later on much more strengthened by the politicians. Uh, it is to separate something which is uh, called ideology. I can't understand really what this ideology is uh, from the people. Uh, so um, uh, when we say that uh, they separate people and they put a lot of persons at personal risk of attacks and lynch, uh, they say, no, 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 we are only against LGBT plus ideology, uh, which is to uh, touch and to ruin our families, our traditional values, and so on and so on. It reminds very much, unfortunately, uh, the rhetorics which was used in Germany in 30s of the 20th century. Uh, I started uh, my actions as the uh, LGBT ally because uh, before I was quite uh, known and uh, uh, rec recognizable person as the uh, human rights activist. And I thought that it would be really good to give my face also uh, as a, an ally uh, of uh, LGBT plus people. Besides, uh, <laughs> among uh, human rights in Poland, there are a lot of LGBT plus people because they are especially uh, powerful and brave and uh, feeling democracy and feeling low and feeling uh, their rights and they are also very much supportive for the others. So when I walk at the street or I protest at the street, they are LGBT uh, youth who call me mommy <laughs> or who call me aunt. So for me, it also became a sort of personal matter. And uh, what we have now, uh, we have sheer attacks. Uh, this year we didn't have uh, the, the Pride Parade, but when we, had, when we had it last week in Warsaw, it was relatively safe. But when we came to Białystok, which is a pro provincial city in Northern Poland, uh, we had the regular uh, battle, the regular physical attacks for people. I was split into my face several times. People were, uh, people, um, were uh, invited to aggression. Uh, we were gathered in the main square of uh, the city and were surrounded by the police who didn't react when other people started throwing stones at us and throwing firecrackers. Uh, it was just like a really very risky situation. And I think it's not because of the police protection, uh, but it was just by chance that nobody was seriously hurt during this time. Uh, few weeks afterwards, last year, the uh, parade in uh, the city, which is my family city, uh, called Lublin, there was also, uh, there were also several attacks and also the police stopped uh, um, a marriage couple who brought a bomb uh, into the march uh, and who wanted to uh, use this bomb against people. So this sounds really terrific and I would like the world to know how it looks like. Uh, and. Uh, 
now uh, several days ago uh, in uh, the midst of a uh, presidential campaign our president uh, uh, used the same rhetoric that they say that they must uh, protect traditional values and catholicism and they must protect their families and that the family values uh, are attacked by lgbt ideology coming to my personal story um you know this is polit this is politics and uh, uh the the rhetorics of the governing party is always looking for some enemy and uh, before uh, the previous election previous par parliament election there were uh, uh immigrants uh they didn't want to come to poland i don't know why <laughs> yeah, perhaps because poland is extremely intolerant country uh, uh not uh, uh not perhaps not people uh, uh but uh, uh, it is reigned in uh, in an extremely uh, 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 intolerant way and uh, they were looking for uh, some emotions uh and uh, for uh, uh bringing a feeling of danger uh to the people so they invented lgbt persons would be the right uh, enemy uh, this time and uh, in the midst of this campaign, our uh, current president announced something which is called uh, the family chart, uh, which uh, uh, emphasizes the importance of the traditional family and also uses the rhetoric of fight, uh, of protection, of the uh, uh, strange uh, ideas coming from the west uh, so i really uh, feel uh, like at risk and today this is it doesn't only happen by today but uh, because of uh, um, uh, disposing disposed uh, uh, during our action uh, against breaking uh, lgbt plus persons uh, uh, three of us are uh, facing the risk of uh, uh, of uh, uh, two years in prison and we thought that this case would be frozen at the uh, at the prosecutor's office but unfortunately just today the prosecutor local prosecutor informed media that he brought uh, the charge into the court uh, so uh, it means that this case uh, received the next step i don't know how it will develop i'm uh, I mean, we are just waiting for the court reaction but i think that we'll go to court uh, and uh, uh, i will have and two other friends of mine will have a regular process because we offended religious feelings of Polish people. Oh, uh, Auntie I've got Ella. the, I've got like, the information. That, yeah. Oh no, 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 I was just going to say, I, I was uh, like, what what you're saying in terms of the, the the narrative that's been spun and the way in which things have been politicized and like I've never heard of something as wild as this in terms of the LGBT um, sort of free zone in in local councils. I'd be really interested at this point because of what you're saying is getting me to think of things. I, I'm wondering at this point, Vitalina, like do you um obviously this we're looking at things across eastern europe is some of the things that ella's saying connecting with your experiences in terms of the issues because i'd love to move on next to thinking about and hearing about what how um, communities have been campaigning and doing activism around this Yes, when uh, Ella spoke about that, um, I recognize the Russian rhetoric that we also have. Um, it's quite popular in some circles in Ukraine, anti-propaganda rhetoric and traditional um, values uh, rhetoric. And uh, this construct um, is very well known. It's quite old. We heard about that maybe last five or six years very very active mm. and this construct also supported by mm, representatives of orthodox church in ukraine conservative and pro-russian politicians and far rights so it's kind of very freaky union uh, supporting this traditional uh, values and traditional uh, family stuff and um, of course we are working with that um, but it's like it's not easy to unite people when um, 
some of people saying and playing around hate feelings to those who are different uh, from each other. So it's quite powerful techniques they are using with this traditional value stuff. And um, it's a pity. But on the other hand, we as human rights defenders, um, we are working with that messages and we translating message of love and acceptance for all. And this is how uh, we can fight with that, with love. Yeah, with love. And I think that is a that is an incredibly powerful thing and very poignant at the time that we're celebrating pride right and because that's what it's about like in terms of the love the togetherness the resilience the celebration but also the struggle so i mean i mean i'm still not over what the the story is that auntie ella just just said to us about um her even facing um prosecution because of her defending other people's rights so this takes me on to and, and solidarity with that and you have amnesty the community and i hope everyone that is watching is uh feeling like they you know whether you're connected or not we must be because this is a struggle for human rights across the world and this is happening within our own continent right this is what i'm hearing sounds like this is out of a george orwell book of the past you know so you know things that it's unlikely it'll happen now but actually um, you, you're facing struggling against this and uh, I'm really interested to hear like what is your work that you've been doing with Amnesty as human rights defenders um, how have you been campaigning tell us some of the struggles of the stories and the victories um, maybe we go back to Auntie Ella mm -hmm. uh, how do we work uh, I'm a sort of freelancer <laughs> so uh, I'm happy to be invited by Amnesty uh, International so sometimes uh, for some campaigns uh, and uh, what can we do we just give a sort of personal example uh, and uh, uh, engage in, uh, in the actions of uh, uh, bigger um, organizations which try to protect uh, human rights uh, plus LGBT, uh, plus people uh, uh, rights. Uh, there are organizations which are most, mostly res responsible for uh, um, education, but I would say that it's very difficult to act now uh, just in the middle of uh, the political fight uh, and uh, election time is always uh, very difficult in Poland and I'm afraid that uh, Mm, the uh, most uh, vulnerable and most fragile uh, uh, parts of our society are not protected well uh, for such times, uh, as if we thought that uh, a sort of respect towards limited but rights of LGBT plus people would uh, remain for good and that nobody would touch such essential value, values like uh, equality, uh, understanding and also science. Yes, uh, because uh, uh, also a sort of scientific uh, background uh, of uh, thinking of uh, LGBT plus people is uh, undermined uh, by our governors. Yes, so when they say that uh, uh, WHO definitions or WHO uh, rules of education are false and uh, this is not uh, the institution we should rely on or that uh, I don't know such uh, uh, things like uh, ICD uh, list of uh, um, illnesses. Yes, should uh, was created by uh, uh, gay lobby and so on, as, and uh, uh, that we should uh, put it down and revise it from the very beginning. It's really means that uh, there is a huge educational problem uh, in Poland. Uh, also, we do not have something like uh, the lessons, uh, good lessons at school. Uh, why? Because uh, the education uh, was unfortunately left apart uh, and uh, not protected well uh, by uh, uh, democratic powers uh, in Poland. Uh, also, when Vitalina was talking about the Orthodox Church, uh, we've got the same problem, uh, problem, 
<laughs> with Catholic Church, uh, which is free to enter our schools. And for example, in Poland now, in primary schools, kids has got uh, have got. Uh, two hours of religion per week uh, and this is not about religion this is just religious education and it is not uh, supervised by any civil uh, uh, any civil body uh, so they can uh, teach whatever they want and when i uh, think why people uh, come to the idea that they are in danger of ideology yes uh, uh, it's because i think that they were they are taught from the very beginning that it's something they should be afraid of uh, so i think uh, we failed some tests our democracy is a sort of uh, young woman or young man <laughs> and uh, uh, we didn't uh, uh, establish a good um, how to say uh, uh, good mechanism to protest uh, to, to protect the the, the, the the most vulnerable people uh, and we just so, sort of left them alone so if I was to come in there, so what I mean, like I think, um, what, like Vitalina said, this freaky unity that exists between uh, faith organisations, the government, fascist groups, um, and this weird um, and dangerous sort of propaganda and lack of education, as you've both pointed to, and re re married with the sort of ancient rhetorics that are being used. Um, what? That seems like the activity of the state or those people not friendly or not um, recognizing the LGBT community or the activism that happens around it. I want to I know, I'm sure people in the audience want to know, like, what is the thing that you two are doing to address that with other people uh, in, in your respective countries? Could we go to maybe Vitalina to hear some of that? Mm. I'm sorry, Sodas. Can you repeat, please, a question because sure. I didn't get. Yeah, no problem. So, um, like you know, it's 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 clear that the the opposition to the LGBT community, those that don't recognize it, whether it's the state or the churches or uh, or yeah. the fascist groups that you've been talking about, they've got lots of activities. They're doing their own version of activism, let's just say, against um, um, the LGBT community. Where I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really interested, and I'm sure the UK audience is also interested in knowing, like, what what is the work that you're doing, like, to tackle this? Ah. Great, great question. Um, I have example of uh, one hand international solidarity, on the other hand, um, short, long story of my activistic work. So um, let's briefly start. 2017, we are doing first women's rights action in my women uh, in my native town Ujhrod, and we attacked by far right group. Uh, 2018. Uh, we're doing the same uh, action despite that we received a lot of threats uh, from this uh, far-right group uh, we are doing this action second time and we attacked violently uh, by this far-right group again because uh, they wanted to make us mm, silent and uh, we started to uh, work with amnesty international first ukraine they offered us support and they actually did a lot uh, when we went to police uh, to recognize that crime that was um, against us and then we started to work with amnesty international because a lot of people from different parts of the world uh, supported this supported our fight and we did a massive campaign one year campaign it was very huge uh, thousands, thousands of letters to our Ministry of Interior, in police, and so on. And what is the result, uh, you will ask? Uh, in 2018, uh, we did successfully women's rights action in my native town, Ujgrod, and not only this action was protected, but all women's rights action across all Ukrainian territory were protected by the police on the highest level as possible. That was the result of our international campaign. And that was a direct change after we started uh, to work with uh, Amnesty International activists. 
So I'm happy. And um, one thing I wanted to share with you about this um, event, successful. Ah, also this year, 2020, uh, already uh, we've done a women's rights action uh, in Ushrod. It was protected even less than last time, and it was safe. It was free for everyone. People were with children and so on. We had like really nice uh, celebration. And uh, in 2018, what we used, like these groups, they are values messages but uh, when we uh, take a look in ukrainian history we will say th that in ukraine we have a lot of feminists uh, and a lot of um, men who supported uh, feminism uh, in 18th century 17th century and so on so we decided uh, talk to people and we said that feminism is our tradition that was a highlight uh, of our action and after a lot of people uh, recognize that we in history have a lot of uh, feminists and pro-feministic ideas and we shared with people with some of these uh, ideas uh, they supported those who didn't have like uh, in mind anything about that question let's say so i think that we could use um, the same let's say messages um but putting them on the positive side and on the side of love and um, how lgbt mentioned um like to to educate people uh, more in that area wonderful fatalina can i ask you something how is it yes. you stay so positive yeah good question I was um, like I participated in the revolution of dignity in Ukraine that we had in uh, 2013 2014 and there for three and a half week that I spent there I faced a lot of danger like literally physical danger danger and this is what made me so positive and active after that after that stuff I not afraid anymore <laughs> anything uh, Vitalina, you have just humbled me. Instead of saying um, violence or threats of violence scared you, you're just like, well, actually, I'm not scared of anything. But like, look, the 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 thing that you're talking about in terms of international solidarity and what it provides, I think this is this is the message that we need to hear and we need to act on. And if if um, people in terms of that rights for right campaign or getting involved and making sure that lots of people put pressure on the interior of ministry there. Uh, has led to that we need to keep pushing right we need to we need to act together work together organize together to push to see how far we can take this and i guess at this point i'd love to bring auntie ella back in like auntie ella you've also said things that like you know I, that have humbled me just just in the last you know 30 minutes or so and you're here despite hearing today that you know you could be prosecuted and you've been doing human rights activism for so long i want to know like how you also keep doing this and what what are some of the key actions that uh, you're doing now and that people should be aware of and get involved in mm -hmm. Antilla? okay uh, sorry <laughs> I, uh, I just i just lost my connection for, for a while uh, look i will tell you about one story uh, uh, I was uh, uh, in a group of anti-fascists, and we were in. Uh, we were charged with uh, uh, some uh, uh, accusations, and we had criminal cases. And it was uh, observed by Amnesty International. And there was a huge campaign, uh, and I was telling. I was telling to the people who uh, from from abroad who took part in this how important it was for us. Uh, so when whenever we had the court case, one of the coordinators from our Polish Amnesty uh, International used to come to the court uh, with a bunch of letters from uh, abroad, from different countries, uh, and uh, he, he was just giving it to us just to see how many people uh, 
think about us yes and how many people care enough to write letters of support and i carry these letters i've got them as a sort of um how to say a sort of talisman uh, yes with me uh, uh during difficult times and when i go to court i think that there are people who, uh, in the world who care about it and i was invited to talk about this case uh anti-fascist case i uh, was traveling uh, through belgium and through the Netherlands and I never received such a big support and understanding what we are fighting about and I really made friends who understood who were really uh, who started thinking that there are people in Poland and they cannot be left alone. And this is not the problem of bad governing in Poland, but this is the European case because we are the part of Europe and we must uh, feel uh, that uh, the, the our fates uh, are uh, the international concern and i remember when i came back from this tour from belgium and uh, the netherlands very next day at six o'clock in the morning the police came to uh, my flat and i was arrested and amnesty international reacted very quickly internationally that what is going on with the uh, uh, with the human rights activist why was she arrested and when i came back home i uh, realized that i'm really a part of human rights community and uh, whenever i uh, face a sort of danger uh, I never feel alone now. I just something got uh, at my back that was a sort of, which my friends from the Netherlands uh, brought me to the court case once. And it's what they did that people from the Netherlands stand with me. And there was the number of signatures they managed to gather. You can't uh, even feel how much strength it gives. I don't want Poland to face any physical danger we are just split equally in two halves somebody was working very carefully for this to split polish people so much and uh they succeed uh in splitting us so much and i don't want us to follow the line of ukraine uh, that it was so dangerous but uh, i don't want my people to face physical danger <laughs> and uh even if uh i feel uh afraid uh i'm not alone and uh, uh okay i'm so, so, sorry <laughs> no 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 this is this is exactly it and I'm, I'm we're getting lots of um questions from the audience coming in as well and it is exactly on what you're saying and uh the thing that people are interested in, based on what you're saying around international solidarity, is what can they do now? Because from both of what you've said is international solidarity is a real thing. Amnesty is a, an, an absolutely brilliant platform that allows and facilitates for this. But you need to tell us what else can we do here in the UK to take action and be in solidarity with you and support your cause and learn from um, from yourselves. So. Um, you, you know, you you were just on that point, um, uh, Ella. Do you want to speak on on that first, and then Vitalina yourself as well? Give us some ideas of things that we could do to help you organise on an international front. Well, oh, I'd love to say something. Yes, I'd love to say something about this uh, local councils which uh, uh, declared this LGBT uh, plus ideology free. Uh, they've got the partner town partner towns in Europe, and mm. uh, several of them uh, reacted on this. Some of them uh, warned that they would like they they would withdraw from this partnership if such declaration uh, will be uh, will be uh, 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 a sort of uh, a sort of public. Uh, and it is a form, but much better form, I would say, was the reaction. I, I am not the privileged to, 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 to judge it, but I was personally moved more by the action of several uh, organizations from these partner cities when they say, we will come to them and we'll tell uh, you stories from our countries and from our uh, towns, how we live uh, together and uh, how we 
face uh, cases of intolerance or uh, uh, how we solve some problems and uh, we'll just sh we'll just share our stories with you because we are your partners and we don't want to withdraw from uh, this sort of connection so this is a huge action great action uh, uh, started by some uh, LGBT plus plus activists and I think it's uh, we've got a sort of map of Poland on which all these towns are indicated yes and people can write letters to uh, the authorities to the local councils telling uh, just what they want yes so, uh, about the brotherhood and sisterhood and about the humanity values and so on and i think it would work very very well uh, except of uh, uh, supporting uh, um, uh, actions of uh, amnesty international which are already uh, on uh, we also um, uh, i started collaboration with uh, frontline defenders because uh, uh, we also found that our personal uh, security needs to be a little bit uh, strengthened so uh, sometimes it's uh, really nice if uh, people who are overloaded with hatred uh, could uh, I don't know come somewhere and uh, have a rest yes or just feel that uh, they've got the support from um, Yes, from the friends abroad. Yes, so this is what what comes to my mind in terms of international uh, solidarity. And Antiela, that is incredible. I mean, what a brilliant thing! So for everyone watching now, you are not. If 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 this is your first thing that you've watched, you are no longer an observer. You're all activists, and we're all going to be uh, in inter, you know like showing solidarity. And what uh, Antiela was referring to was like um, I think in the UK we call them twin cities. Sometimes you drive around on the motorway, and there'll be a sign, and it'll say this town or this city is twinned with something else, um, another town or city in in Poland. And so Antiela is calling an action to all of us, saying we must like take action with amnesty but also in these sort of towns and cities make sure we influence there because they have uh, influence um, in, in these towns and cities in Poland and uh, on that on that note can we go back over to uh, Vitalina and can you tell us about like what can we can do here in the UK to support all your work in Ukraine um, yes uh, first, uh, we will have action for Elisbeta for support and uh, please uh, do that, <laughs> please support her because she's in the middle of a fight, yes. And then um, for me, um, what I wanted to say is that uh, a lot of people in Ukraine, uh, in UK, sorry, already supported me a lot with letters and uh, with actions and I'm so happy because it was like thousands of letters uh, from different uh, people from different parts um, of uh, UK and I was happy to feel that support mm, and we already did a lot of actions together maybe in future we will do something mm, what I wanted to ask you this second thing particularly um, I noticed that sometimes people mm, can take Mm, some messages from Russian propaganda against Ukraine because they are putting a lot of money financing a lot of English speaking channels also in UK presented channels and medias just to spread negative information about Ukraine fake information about Ukraine and uh, I want you just to ask first check the facts always check facts second no don't believe russian propaganda because we have war with this country and they want to take our territory and th that is why they're doing this stuff and third believe your news your media that you have already established uh, in ukraine with um, huge history with a good fact checking but please do not take this pieces of russian propaganda against ukraine and not spread it what i wanted to ask you this will be the best what you could do 
for Ukraine and for LGBTQI plus activists who are facing actually the consequences uh, because of that. Okay, so 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 this is for the whole of the audience and everyone listening. Like I said, you are no longer observers; you are all activists in this. Yes. And Vitalina's call to action is to make sure that we do, we do check, um, fact checking. We don't just believe propaganda. We interrogate things. We understand things. But we continue to to follow her work and get involved where we can. And and obviously, there's the other thing that I'm just thinking of. Actually, um, Auntie Ella just told us she's facing prosecution. So we need to we need to be in solid directly with this we need to make sure you tell us exactly how we can help and we will organize something to try and help this because that can't be you know we we'll put it out on our social media we we'll, we we'll write the letters we'll take the actions whatever we need to because actually people like yourself both of you have been doing incredible work for such a long time in sustaining uh, sustaining this and inspiring us all abroad as well as uh, in your home country so there's no way we're letting them lock you up you know, we have to be, we, ha we have to make sure we, we support your cause. We're getting loads of other questions coming in and I, and I realize um, we should be ending soon. So the final question that I'm going to ask, I'm going to kind of put a few questions together is, um, in, uh, and this is a question for both of you, and if we can keep it kind of shortish, um, but in, in terms of like both of you have mentioned political parties and it would, and we're also, to, you know, like I think we see this across all around the world that different people of different ages seem to react to the LGBT community and its causes in different ways. Like, I guess what I'm asking now is in terms of is there any political parties that um, that do recognize the work that you do and the community that you are part of or allies to in, in your respective countries? And in terms of recognition amongst um, just normal citizens, uh, is there a difference between different age groups and demographics? Vitalina, maybe you first? Yes, I can start uh, briefly. Mm, we like actually uh, don't have openly supporting parties in parliament, uh, but we have some of them outside of parliament. Um, and we have um, a lot of natural uh, parties and uh, some individual uh, politicians uh, who uh, support uh, LGBTQI plus issues and even trying to do some activistic work uh, in parliament. So we really appreciate that support. And uh, for the last three or five years, uh, it become more and more visible and uh, i was also impressed when our new president said openly that uh, please get off uh, lgbtqi plus people but let's say how it will affect uh, in practice so um yes i think we have chances let's say and just just on that vitalina in terms of like demographics do you notice something different with younger people older people poorer people richer people more educated and less like like what, what you know do you notice differences in your country yes uh, there is difference um unfortunately um, a lot of all i don't want to be an ageist let's say um a lot of people who um, were raised by ussr uh, system mm -hmm. uh, when LGBTQIA plus uh, it was something uh, very criminal and uh, unacceptable they are still mm, not supporting um, LGBTQIA plus people uh, but on the same time we see that uh, a lot of young people uh, more open-minded people more maybe educated in these issues people they are support uh, LGBTQI plus activism and human rights in general uh, excellent I mean um... It is really interesting to, to know that because it's, it's, I don't think it's being ageist. It's you're saying people that were brought up under a particular p political upbringing, you know, or in an era because of the laws associated at that time, 
um, have a particular view. But that 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 gives us, you know, that we can still win people over. People can still be allies. But also, if there's people that have particular issues, we can challenge them. Um, Auntie Ellen, over to you for uh, for the final question again. Like, is there any political parties that do accept this? It was interesting to hear from Vitalina that there's growing support amongst independent politicians. But how about in mainstream parties or independent politicians in Poland? Uh, we've got the coalition of the left side parties, uh, which are in the parliament now, but they are in minority, so their voice is not uh, very well heard of. And uh, uh, as uh, it is in uh, similarly as it is in Ukraine, uh, we've got the central parties, uh, which are quite neutral or rather reserved, uh, not wanting to touch some, uh, how they say, uh, uh, subtle matters as uh, uh, women rights or LGBT plus people rights, especially in times of, of uh, election. And uh, we've got uh, particular politicians which are openly supporting uh, human rights. So uh, the situation is, I think, a bit similar. Uh, uh, what is different uh, uh, in the first at the first stage of our uh, presidential election? We call it presidential election, although it is not uh, uh, in accordance with our constitution. But this is a completely other matter. Uh, it just looks that uh, our governing party can go across our constitution and do whatever they plan. Uh, so it also shows that uh, the, the, the left parties uh has not power and cannot uh, be very influential. But at the first stage of our um, presidential election, one candidate was an open gay. Uh, so uh, uh, it, it is a sort of change. Uh, unfortunately, he received uh, the very weak support, uh, not because he's a gay, I would say, but that uh, he's uh, uh, campaign was quite weak and uh, that people who are left, who's got their heart on the left side as me, uh, decided to support another candidate, more centrist-like, yes, because uh, he seemed to be stronger and uh, had a, a, a bigger prospect to win. And now we've got uh, the last stage of uh, the presidential election, which is before be between uh, the current president, which is the far right, and uh, uh, the central politician, uh, which is his uh, uh, core, uh, how to say, competitor. And uh, I'm afraid that during this presidential campaign, there was no word about uh, uh, openly about LGBT uh, plus people. Uh, also, because uh, the, uh, the, 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 they don't want to introduce uh, something which would provoke, as they say, too much uh, the, the, the right side. And uh, I heard personally that because of my action with Rainbow Madonna, I heard personally that uh, I also put my finger into the uh, right wing winning. <laughs> so uh, sometimes the reaction of the center of our politicians is uh, really uh, uh, not to be not uh, not necessarily what you used to in the Western Europe. Yes, so uh, uh, when they say that uh, during election time LGBT people rights or women rights should be put back in the world wardrobe, and when we win we'll take it out again, uh, and just now please remain silent for more two weeks and so on and so on. So uh, it's painful for me as. Uh, I hope a good ally, and there is no bad time of talking about uh, human basic rights for sake. Uh, so, um, uh, coming back to the second question, it's very interesting. One of our uh, uh, media made a, a sort of research between people from 18 till I think 39. Uh, so I think that they will uh, create the politics of Poland for next uh, generations. And the split was not by age, but was by gender. And it turned out that uh, Polish young women are uh, conscious of the real risks such like uh, the climate or uh, the unemployment 
all the uh, weakness of Polish um, uh, health service. Uh, because the question was what they are afraid most of, while uh, young Polish men were mostly afraid of LGBT plus ideology. So uh, the hope is in uh, young women, and uh, this is uh, this is the group uh, uh, we really <laughs> uh, have hope that, that that will support human rights. So uh, it also shows that uh, men are much more, <laughs> unfortunately, under the influence of uh, uh, of uh, um, uh, government me media or by the right wing movement which uh, organizations which gave them a sort of feeling of uh, uh, sort of artificial power where they've got guns and where can where can they pretend uh, fighting uh, if they come to uh, Maidan in Kiev, I think that uh, uh, they would see what real blood and uh, uh, fear means, yes? Uh, but here they can pr pr pretend uh, they are the soldiers of God or other values. And I think this is the problem uh, of education coming back by the loop to my favorite, <laughs> favorite uh, area. I, I feel like m much of the issues, the justice issues around the world, often women are the ones pursuing justice and they have to, often have to be the hope that we're working with. And like you said, men often fall under the influence of all sorts of terrible things. Not not the case everywhere, but like uh, that does definitely happen. I mean, th this has been just incredible. I'm, I'm, I'm not just going to say this to you because I feel like I have to. I'm going to say this because I mean this. I feel like this 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 conversation between us is going to be one of the defining moments in my politics around this area and and it's because of you two you two have been incredibly heartening humbling inspiring you have just you know the, the you've been just dropping things to us like yeah I've been threatened I, I'm going to be prosecuted but these are all the things we're getting on with against mammoth structural issues um and fighting what's almost like um uh, you know, like uh, battles that involve narrative and rhetoric and fascism and poor education and religious intolerance and so forth. So I, I just want to, from the bottom of my heart, want to thank you. And I hope everyone that's been watching, like I've said a couple of times before, you are, we are, none of us here are observers anymore. We have to become activists. We're compelled by the story of Vitalina and Auntie Ella and we must take you know like d during this the next two weeks you know i want everybody here to to go on our website to make sure that they are um seeing all the other programs that are happening because this serves as our political education our, our activism around human rights and gives us ideas and energy so we can meet other people and act in the interest of um justice all around the world but like please 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 everyone do not just sit and listen to these things, act with people. Vitalina and Ella have just made it abundantly clear that international solidarity works. It is important as it is fuel for them to, to keep going. Like they find it heartening, it gives them energy, but it also works. It makes their lives better. It makes the lives of everyone that they're trying to work with better. And and with this, I just want to, again, thank you. And I'm sure the audience does. We're getting loads more questions, which we don't have time for. But, you know, like um, like both um, Ella and uh, Vitalina have pointed out to, like Amnesty facilitates um, lots of this great work where we come together. And, we, uh, and we're very lucky to have leaders like themselves who have ongoing campaigns that I want everyone watching to, to visit the prideinside.uk um, website and sign up and I know Elzvieta, Ella's got campaigns running right now, please sign up uh, and, and support these campaigns and I really hope you two keep your journey with us and keep telling stories. I, now that I've met you very early on in my career in Amnesty, I'm so going to keep in touch and, and make sure I get other people to meet you so you can inspire them. This has been truly, truly um, incredible. I, I know that people watching have found the same um, and again, like, listen to the calls to action and thank you again. And thank you to, to Max, who's been following everything on, on, the, on, on the side and making sure that um, everybody else um, 
uh, uh, hears this as well. Uh, so thank you for the team um, behind who've put this together. Thank you to all our partners who've worked together with us on Pride Inside, and thank you very much to you two for um, sharing your insights and inspiring us. Thank you all. Thank you all and uh, keep your fingers crossed for all uh, human rights activists around the world and let's be together. Thank you. Solidarity. With Solidarity. Solidarity. Take care. Thank you all. Take care. Bye. Thank you, Max. That was brilliant.